Red Wing makes one of the most popular heritage style boots in the Iron Ranger. It's a lot of people's very first boot when they get, when they get into this heritage world. It's fairly affordable. It's under 350 bucks. It's a classic uh, toe cap look with the service boot style for the rest of it. Very simple construction. It's grippy enough that you can wear it a lot of places. It's not crazy high heel. It's something you can dress up, you can dress down. And it's just one of the most popular heritage boots of all time. But it's little brother, the blacksmith, has doesn't get hardly any attention. I don't really I don't really know why because it's it's essentially the exact same boot just without the toe cap. And I'm not sure what it is about this boot that people don't love as much as the Iron Ranger. So we're going to cut this thing in half, run it through our test and identify what exactly is different between these two boots and why people are sleeping on the 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 blacksmith even like I just about called it the Iron Ranger and why nobody seems to care about the blacksmith boot Raycon has made a name for themselves in premium audio with their products like their everyday earbuds that I have, their everyday headphones, plus their new line of Raycon Home and Raycon Power Tech products. Like I said, I've got the everyday earbuds and they have three sound profiles. They have vivid voice technology with wireless charging case, which is super handy. Awareness mode for more transparency so you don't get hit by a car. Plus they're really water resistant, which is really good for me because I wear them at the gym or I wear them hiking so that sweat and water doesn't ruin the earbuds. Plus they have a pretty long battery life. But the things that have made Raycon popular is they provide premium tech products at a great price. Their products have earned tens of thousands of five-star reviews and they offer easy and free returns, free shipping, and buy now, pay later options. And like I mentioned this past year, they've expanded their entire business with the introduction of Raycon Home and Raycon Power Tech. The Raycon Power Tech is for charging and cables like the Magic 180 cable that's super useful because it can be bent in any direction and is compatible with iOS, micro USB, and type C devices. Raycon Home has a whole other line of products for the home that has stuff like faucet filters that you can attach directly to your sink for faucet and just generally Raycon products are super universal so they make a really great last minute holiday gift and the things that I really like about Raycon I pretty much already mentioned I like that really heavy bass sound profile but also just how small this little charging thing is and it has a little keychain attachment you can just throw under your keys and I love that they're water resistant so I don't have to stress about ruining them so this holiday season get premium sound at a great price and save even more doing it go to buyraycon.com slash Rosanville to get 15% off site-wide so what is this boot? Well, the brand is Red Wing. The style is the blacksmith. They weigh one pound, 10 ounces. They retail for $329 compared to the 349 in the Iron Rangers. They are made in the United States by Red Wing. And the way that they position this boot is the blacksmith is descended from a boot worn in workshops by day and shined up to go out at night. The six inch boot is designed to protect your feet and ankle from hot cinders at the forge. And today it locks out dirt in the summer and snow in the winter. True to its roots, the blacksmith blends construction and material materials that create both rugged durability and handsome styling. Premium leather and three-quarter Goodyear leather welt with a Puritan triple stitch construction sit on a Vibram 430 mini lug outsole that provides reliable all-season traction. So let's look at the leather first. Is this leather any different than the Iron Rangers? As far as I can tell, it's exactly the same. It's the same harness or amber harness or uh, mule skinner. It seems to be the same leather used on both versions of the boot. I like this leather a lot because of this really intense pull-up that you get. You can see how it goes from this dark, dark color to almost a, a brighter orange. And the way they achieve this, and I, we've talked about this a bunch, but I just think it's really interesting, is they, they leave the core of the leather purposely blued, and then as, you, as they tan this leather, they keep stuffing more and more oils and wax onto the inside, which naturally darkens the leather because it's, it's like getting a piece of paper wet or your clothes wet, it darkens up. But as you bend and fold and, and wear these boots, that wax almost breaks up and lightens up over time, almost like when you bend plastic or you bend a candle, it lightens up, same concept here. And so you get these really high high um, highlights where you crease it and bend it a lot, and then the spots where you don't really see a lot of wear stay really dark. And people love that patina that develops over time with this specific leather that's on both of these boots. But one thing that is clearly different between these two boots is the paneling that's that's done. I, I Initially, I just thought it was the blacksmith was an Iron Ranger without the toe cap, which it is, but you also have a different heel stay and a counter because on the Iron Rangers, you have an external counter cover, which is a single piece as it goes up the back stay. And the benefit of that is you don't have a high pressure point on the inside, you just have a single seam going up the back, which could potentially lead to some failure, but it's a really common way of making boots and very few people wear through that seam. And it allows you to cup that counter on the inside from the outside, allegedly giving it a little bit better fit compared to this style, where if you look at the inside of this boot, it has an internal counter cover, more similar to their mock toe boots. 
And this is, you know, it's one of these things where you split in hairs. Anytime that it has a dedicated leather counter cover, I'm happy because so many other boots just use a fabric counter and you wear through it and you get that spot in your heel that the flap of the fabric's wearing around. It ruins the durability and the look and the feel of your boots. So both of them are really good, but it's just a different way of achieving the same uh, concept. And the reason they do this differently on the blacksmith, I'm assuming, is to give it a more clean and refined look. It looks a lot more similar to the uh, Wolverine thousand mile boot. It's a similar counter uh, setup with the, just the heel stay and then the internal counter cover. And so I think they just wanted to make it look a, a little bit more refined and less, less rugged, like this more service boot inspired uh, Iron Ranger. Both the boots have three speed hooks and eyelets underneath that. Both of them are 270 Goodyear welted where you have this welt stitch that stops at the heel and the, he the heel is nailed on. They have the, uh, the exact same outsole with the mini lug and the top lift that's a red wing top lift. They both have the exact same lining on the inside of the boot. And from the just feeling on the inside, it seems like they're built the same with the, that really thick leather insole with a little bit of that sock liner at the heel to cover any nails. So from the outside, this boot is basically the exact same boot except for those two panels, which is that heel stay and the toe, toe cap. Even the last that it's built on is exactly the same. The stitching pattern on the upper is slightly different around the collar, but for the most part, it's exactly the same. So, so my initial thoughts are, it all just comes down to look because so far they're, they're identical in materials. So let's cut these boots in half and see what's on the inside and see if we can draw any conclusions as to why nobody seems to care about the blacksmith. All right, we got them cut in half, and if you're not subscribed, consider doing it, because we cut apart two brand new pairs of boots and shoes every single week, and it's a really easy way to support us. It's the only thing that YouTube seems to care about, and uh, it's a free little click, so just drag the mouse down and click that if you're not, and if you are subscribed, thank you for your support. So now, let's see what's inside. So identical to the Iron Ranger on the inside. There's really no difference whatsoever. Still has that steel shake, the cork filling, no midsole, that really thick leather insole that breaks into the shape of your foot over time and makes these boots really easy to resole and durable and comfortable over time. But there's really no difference. It's the exact same boot. So why is the Iron Ranger so much more popular? I kind of don't know. I thought there'd be some differences in how they're built and the materials, but they're, they're basically the exact same boot. So I, I think what it really comes down to is the blacksmith is such a classic looking heritage boot that there's tons of brands that have basically the exact same boot with the same heel counter, the same like service boot style, low heel. I think it's just more ordinary compared to the Iron Ranger. You have all these extra panels that make it look a lot more rugged and more durable. You have a toe cap that is a true double toe cap. You've got the heel counter that turns into the back stay and it just is a lot more like substantial and a rugged look compared to the more refined look of the blacksmith. And so I think for that reason, the blacksmith kind of sits in this, this gray zone of like not quite being a dressier boot, but not being a super over rugged workwear boot. I think it's just one of those gray zone boots that doesn't swing a lot of people one way or the other. It's not quite as loved as other boots, but it's also not quite as hated. I think there is something to say with about um, the zeitgeist of the boot culture, when they latch onto a specific boot, people are buying them and posting it, just it perpetuates itself and it's such an iconic looking boot. And it, it is such a comfortable boot and it's one of my favorite boots because of how high quality it is for such a great price. So I think it comes down to those three things. It's just not as extreme and eye-catching of a boot. 
It's a very gray zone boot where it's not overtly heritage, but it's not also not dressy. And then I think number three is it just never quite caught on in the same way of in the cultural zeitgeist of the boot world nearly as much as the Iron Ranger. And so overall, is that boot is the boot still worth it? Is it up to the same standard as the rest of the Red Wings? It is because it's built the exact same way. Is it worth 330 bucks? I think, it, and honestly, I think it's a good looking boot and comparing it to some of the other boots that we've cut apart that are in that same style, it's still built to that Red Wing standard that everyone else has compared against. So ultimately, I don't really know why it's not popular. It, like it seems like it should be, and maybe it is, and maybe, maybe it just doesn't get talked about, but I think it is definitely one of Red Wing's most slept on boots. So let me know what you think. What are your theories on why it's not as popular? Um, which one do you like more versus one versus the other? What are your experiences in both? And um, the comment section is a great resource for sizing. So put your sizing info below. And thank you guys for supporting everything we do with this channel, the Rose Anvil 2 channel, the Builds channel, and all the handmade leather goods that we make here in the shop. Thank you guys. See ya.